Hi, my name is Wanya Ward. Uh, I currently serve as the summer coordinator for the Ronald E. McNair Scholars Program uh, and the overall larger TRIO programs here at NC State. Um, TRIO programs are a variety of programs that are not located at every institution across the United States, but are located at a lot of them. Um, and students might have already had some interactions with them, with them based on their high school experience, um, because we also have, you know, the Upper Bounds program and the Talent Search program as well under the TRIO banner. Um, these programs are all intended to pretty much give underrepresented students from minority groups um, or first generation college students with, from low income backgrounds, pretty much the support systems and structures necessary to be able to thrive in the college system. I think it's really important to find those support systems when you're first kind of matriculating because it's a struggle being able, not being able to have all of the resources and all of the this knowledge that other individuals might have. But TRIO really kind of provides that. There are three main areas that you can uh, enter into through TRIO, uh, being Student Support Services, Student Support Services STEM, and uh, Ronald E. McNair Scholars Program. Um, they The two general ones are Student Support Services and Student Support Services STEM. Um, they all require an application to, be, to get into these programs. However, once you're in these programs, they really just want to help you succeed and be able to thrive. So they offer academic coaching, uh, weekly check-ins, um, financial aid workshops, as well as um, resource um, referrals as well, too. So if you need a specific resource, they can help you find those resources, too. They offer workshops, uh, graduate school visits, uh, cultural activities. There's so many different things that they can offer in the TRIO office. And because it's a federally funded program, um, they make sure they document all these things. And there is an intended goal of getting you to your next steps in your career and in your life goals. Um, I specifically work with the Ronald McNair Scholars Program, which helps students that want to achieve their PhD um, go through that process and learn about the entire uh, grad school process, about the research process, pretty much everything that, that can go into how do I get from where I am now to where I want to get in my future. Um, I really think that if you don't have a support system going into undergrad, if you are going to struggle a little bit, you think you're going to struggle, I think it's really important for you to go ahead and find your TRIO office if it's on campus um, or a similar service on campus that offers specific support towards first generation low income students or undergraduate students from unrepresented uh, backgrounds as well too. Find those support systems and be able to uh, connect with the staff there and the faculty members that are connected there as well too and find or and create your, your, your support network and be able to thrive. Thank you. All right, hello everyone. My name is Megan Stanley, if we have not met yet, and I am the College Readiness and Success Coordinator at Student U. It has been awesome working on the summer series with the Emily K Center, and I am super excited to see all who can join us for our upcoming summer retreat. For those who can't make it, you can always tune into this wonderful playlist where this student resource video will be housed. Um, and you will be able to see a ton of resources that you should be on the lookout for once you actually get settled into your campus. So the exciting resource that I have to share with you all are academic success centers. They can also be called student success centers. The name of these can really vary campus to campus. And so at the final slide of this, our third slide will kind of show some example names of what these can be called, um, but the purpose of them is the same. And a lot of the programs and services that they offer will be the same too. So we'll jump into what you can expect from an academic or student success center. We'll look at the different names that these centers could be called. Um, and then we'll close with this particular resource. So what are academic success centers? Um, so these are centers or services that are really positioned on campus to promote academic skill building. Um, they recognize that with your role as a student, so thinking about you um, as an academic scholar, someone who is studying and majoring in something rich with a long-term goal that they want to help you succeed and move towards that goal, particularly on the academic front. So academic success centers provide free programs and resources to help you achieve and reach those academic goals and of course develop positive and I would say tailored academic skills to you. So when we think about studying, for example, 
academic success centers can help you think about what is your go-to tailored studying method. Recognizing this transition from high school to college, some of the, the studying techniques that you used in high school may not transfer the same uh, once you're in college. Or maybe when you were in high school, you maybe didn't have a studying routine. Um, and when you think about college, you don't really know where to start. Academic success centers are great resources to help with that specifically. So how do I study? Um, how do I study for a particular subject? Kind of recognizing that the way you apply things that you've learned in a math or a science class is gonna vary when we think about application in an English or more humanities-based class. So how do I kind of navigate that as well? Those type of questions are things that an academic success center can answer for you in addition to providing you with tangible resources or materials that you can practice so that you can identify the specific studying skills and strategies that work best for you and your learning style. Um, kind of more tangible resources that you can find at an academic success center is tutoring. So many campuses offer individual kind of one-on-one -on -one level tutoring in addition to group tutoring, you'll often see that for more camp, for more class or subject based tutoring. Um, so math classes, science classes, computer science, even those are some common subjects where you might see um, a group sort of classroom level tutoring opportunity where you kind of drop in. There might be some tutors available floating around and you can kind of group with people who might be working on similar things as you are based on the pacing of your course. Um, in addition to that format of tutoring, you are always able to get a one-on-one -on -one or individual level tutor as well through your academic success center. Um, so that is if maybe based on your learning style, a group or a large format doesn't work well with you, um, or if you're maybe in more of a niche class where you need sort of individual attention, you could be in an upper level course, um, or one where there is not a specific subject marked off. Um, so with tutoring services, these can be made by appointment. So depending on your campus, they may kind of go the route where you actually make an appointment through their calendar system, it actually may take an email. So the way in which you set up a tutoring appointment can vary campus to campus, but the specific way you would go about it is on the Academic Success Center website. In addition to appointments, many centers also encourage walk-ins. So kind of that drop-in opportunity where you can go to the center and tutors are probably around on site to float and help students as they come in on an ongoing basis. And in addition to the way in which you might set up an appointment at the Academic Success Center, the format of your tutoring can vary as well. So because of the pandemic, as we can see even in, in me recording this um, resource and all of the recordings that are in this video, virtual is a big part of our norm in day-to-day -day life. And so tutoring, you can get in person at your campus or you can also have it virtual. Um, and so those are different things that you can think about as you get settled in this fall with your class schedule. Really think about how tutoring might fit in to your day-to-day -day class schedule and also the method in which you might fit. In addition to that resource, um, another resource that I really love talking about are writing centers. Um, so a writing center, as the name sort of describes, is a resource that helps you with your writing. And so kind of entering college, you'll definitely write a good number of papers. And so a writing center is can help range um, the entire writing process, whether it be how do I develop my outline? What thesis do I wanna share? Um, who can help me sort of develop and strengthen my argument and thesis? 
maybe you kind of have your paper down packed, but you want somebody to maybe proofread and edit it, look at continuity, look at if it even makes sense. Um, or maybe you have not even started writing yet. You haven't started outlining yet. You just want to understand the assignment and you want to understand what specifically am I supposed to be writing about. All of those things, like everything you can think of in terms of the writing process from beginning to you getting that assignment and needing to understand it to the very end of completing that paper, finalizing it, making the final edit, edits and turning it in. That entire process from start to finish is something a writing center can support you with. Um, it is one that I think can go unnoticed on a campus. Like it, I think it's a resource that not a lot of students take advantage of or might learn about a little bit too late. Um, but I wanna encourage all of you to find your writing center. Um, and even if you don't use it on a regular basis, make, make a commitment to at least meet someone, a staff member in the writing center, um, just so you know that you already have a relationship there. So when that essay or academic proposal or research paper or whatever it might be is comes, you know that you have a relationship to kind of help you strengthen and make sure that you're turning in the best work that you can. The last thing that I'll say under this academic skill building umbrella is the free programs that an academic success center offers you. So we talked about two resources, tutoring and the writing center, but academic success centers also have a lot of programming available to students. This can be kind of sessions talking about time management, talking about study skills. Um, they could be more webinar format or kind of in-person sessions where you're able to really gain and practice skills on site. Um, some of my favorite that I used when I was a student on campus came at midterm time. So when you have all of your exams kind of in that one to two week span of time, so midterms are stacked, academic success centers are great resources to tap into because they will often have free programs available to help you manage the stress of your exams. They may have sessions where you can kind of think about how do you want to prioritize your studying? What classes do you want to prioritize? Even thinking about how you want to schedule and time things out. Um, so those are just a few examples of programs that an academic center would offer to you. Um, Kind of a second goal that I would say is a huge priority of all of your colleges and universities are strengthening retention. So thinking about how can I, as a campus, support all of my students from the time that they're, they enter my campus to when they graduate. And so when we think about the time in which you are entering your college campus now to when you will graduate, Academic success centers are great resources that are positioned to help you reach that graduation point. So when we think about building your academic skills, helping you reach your academic goals, and even thinking about your goals outside of the academic sphere, these academic success centers are positioned to kind of help you get to that place. And I'll say a student's use of the academic success center in whatever way can be a really huge indicator of their success, not only in college, but also their success in graduating in whatever time length goal that you have. So that is a little bit about what academic success centers are. This slide is just highlighting five campuses and what their academic success centers are actually called. So it can be called a lot of different things, kind of campus to campus. So I just wanted you all to have an example of what it might be called. And then also, if this is your school, you already have a starting place in terms of where you can go. Um, so Durham Tech, we have the Center for Academic Excellence. They also have a writing center. Uh, North Carolina Central University, 
academic enrichment services, so their services here, it includes tutoring. Something special to note is they have a writing and a speaking studio. So when we think about this studio, that includes writing center that we've talked a lot about, but also a speaking center, or in this case, a speaking studio. Um, so if you want any public speaking support, which is really, really cool. Uh, NC State Academic Success Center, they have an undergraduate writing center. If you go back for a graduate level degree, um, they also have a graduate writing center. UNC Chapel Hill Student and Academic Services Building, and they have two branches, a writing center and then a learning center. So when we think about kind of the studying pieces, uh, figuring out your learning style, time management, all of that would be found in the learning center wing of this building, whereas that tailored writing support would be in that writing center. And then the last example here, UNC Greensboro, theirs is called the Academic Achievement Center. They also have a writing center. Um, if your campus is not listed here, a way that I sort of recommend students find their Academic Achievement Center is to actually Google your campus name. And then with your campus name, you could either type Academic Achievement Center or you can type tutoring, things of that nature, because that first or second result will likely be the resource that you need. Um, all of the academic achievement centers provide tutoring as a service. So typing in your university name or college name with tutoring is a simple way to find your specific building um, for office that would house all of these things. You can also type in your college name with Writing Center to see what pulls up there. So with that, that is all that I have um, to share about this particular resource. Um, I highly recommend all of you using it. Um, and the, the last thing I'll say here, which I think is, is really important, is just recognizing for all of these resources that you'll learn about, even though they are available freely on your campus, it, it will take your initiative, you kind of going in and seeking them out to really be able to, to get the benefit and the gain from them. So when we think about these tutoring services, when we think about uh, the, the, the tailored writing support that you'll get, these academic enrichment skills that are available on your campus, there are a lot that are available but you have to take that onus of seeking them out. You have to take that initiative to build that relationship to ensure that you get what you need. Um, if that sounds scary, which it can, um, that kind of social piece of maybe walking into a building or walking into a center and not really knowing maybe what to ask for, not really knowing what to say, like that process, can be scary or nerve wracking for some students. And so if, if what I am describing, the kind of nervousness resonates with you, please do not hesitate to at least reach out to myself or Kelsey, depending on if you are student U or Emily K, and we can help you make sure that you are connecting with the resources that you need. Um, it really is significant and can make a difference. And so we kind of, our entire staff want to ensure that you are positioned and you feel like you are able to connect with all resources that we're talking about right now um, to be able to succeed and to thrive and ultimately embrace the, the amazing things that you will do on your respective campuses. So with that, uh, I will close. I wish you all a wonderful rest of your day, depending on when you are watching this. Really looking forward to seeing you at our retreat and look forward to supporting and connecting with you throughout this upcoming academic year. Bye, y'all. Hi there. My name is Ayo Agunbiade, and I'm the Associate Director of Academic Advising at NC State's Pool College of Management. Academic advising is meant to serve as a personal connection to the university. 
Um, one that the research indicates is vital to student success and retention. From the outside looking in, many people see us as the people who help students select classes, and they're not wrong. <laughs> it's just that there's much more to that story. Advising may look a little bit different depending on your major or uh, your specific program or university. Um, but in general, academic advisors understand the pressures that are placed on students to not only succeed academically, but to also manage all the other areas of your life, like work, um, family responsibilities, and other things that just come with being an adult student. Um, so yes, while we do help students select classes and chart a path toward graduation, um, we also offer a first place to go if you ever find yourself experiencing academic difficulty. Uh, we offer an opportunity to maybe explore clubs, organizations, or other opportunities to engage on campus. Um, you may be someone to celebrate with after you've earned an A in a class that maybe you found difficult and requested tutoring for. Um, we also offer you know, someone to connect you to the counseling center or other resources if you find yourself in crisis. Um, so we do a lot more than just helping students with classes. Um, I'll leave you with a quick story. When I first started graduate school, it was my own academic advisor's knowledge of my interests and also um, awareness of opportunities on campus that connected me to my first job opportunity in academic advising, which um, has led to my career. So this is my ask that I'll leave you with. Um, I want you to find out early on who your academic advisor is. I want you to get to know that person. I want you to give that person an opportunity to get to know you. Um, and I want you to enjoy having someone in your corner on this incredible ride. Um, congratulations, best of luck, and let your advisors know how they can best support you. So the Counseling Center is essentially all things mental health services for students on and off campus. Um, they offer things such as individualized therapy and group counseling. They offer resources of their own in terms of mental health and taking care of yourself. They offer sometimes physical resources such as stress toys and pamphlets just to support their students physically on campus. They offer all of these sorts of different things that you can always look up within your respective institution's counseling center website or just to give them a call. The other thing I will mention is that most campus counseling centers will have a crisis hotline for you to call um, that will sometimes link to health services, that will sometimes link to Campus PD, depending on the severity. Um, so just know that if you are ever in crisis, if you are ever in need of somebody after hours, call the crisis hotline for your respective school. That can all be found on your school's counseling services website. So with that being said, um, some of the things I wanna point out that I wish somebody had told me when I first um, did my appointments at the Counseling Center on campus is what to expect when you are going into the Counseling Center. Um, oftentimes your school will host specific hours for walk-ins, which is a really nice way, but I will, I will recommend that maybe making an appointment online or giving them a call might be a little bit better because depending on the season, depending on how many students are going to the counseling center at a time, walk-in hours might be pretty crowded. But that being said, know that there are walk-in hours that you can partake in at your counseling center. The other thing that I will say is what to expect on your intake appointments and what to expect following. So with your intake appointments, essentially it is an evaluation to see where you're at, what's been going on, if there's anything that needs to specifically be addressed um, that the counselor may need to know for future appointments. So you can expect them to ask a lot of questions. Um, you can expect them to ask questions about how your mood has been, if there has been any ideation going on because they do you need to know that, um, why you were coming in, what brought you into the office. And then from there, creating a game plan of 
Do we want or need individualized counseling services? Do we want to partake in group counseling? Do we want to partake in off-campus counseling if it's more for sustained periods of time? Because some schools, depending on which, will only offer a certain amount of counseling sessions before they recommend maybe an off-campus service if it is something that you see for the foreseeable future to use. So just keep that in mind. But that being said, that is what you can expect for your initial intake appointment is all all the questions, all of the, you know, what brought you here, what got you here, um, and from there creating a game plan to make sure that you are feeling safe, you are feeling well, um, and that you're feeling supported. So, like I said, really great resources resource I often recommend to a lot of my students because everybody needs somebody to talk to, right? And especially when things can feel tougher, when things feel hard, when things are just not feeling, you know, like your usual way, sometimes talking to somebody at counseling services might be really beneficial. Um, so know that counseling services is an option for seeking support for mental health, seeking support for somebody to talk to, and then seeking support for off-campus service if, if, that's, if that is something that you are interested in. Hello, everyone. My name is George, and I am one of our assistant directors in our Center for Race, Ethnicity, and Diversity Education here at Elon University. Um, in my role, I work specifically to support our students of color at Elon. Um, and so at other universities, the type of work that I do, you will often hear my office referred to as a multicultural student center or multicultural student services or some variation of that. Um, at other universities, the model for the work that I do may look a little bit different. Um, so you may have, for example, Chapel Hill um, has centers for each identity. So they have a Native American center, they have a Latinx center, and so on. At NC State University in Raleigh, they have one office called the Multicultural Student Affairs Office. And typically all the programming that supports students of color comes out of that one office and they have one space. At Elon, we have a hybrid, kind of more of a hybrid model where we have a center called El Centro, which supports our Latinx students. Um, in addition to having a general office called the Creed and we do our work together. Um, but even though the names change and the model looks a little bit different at each university, generally speaking, the mission and goals of each multicultural center are the same, and that's to support our students of color. Um, so what do these centers offer for students? Again, that does depend a little bit on each university that you're at, but many of these offices simply coordinate programs to help students of color be successful. Um, in navigating higher education, help them find community, um, help them celebrate and explore their identities. For example, many offices do um, do the national or annual Heritage Month celebrations for each specific identity. Um, or they might do workshops around educating others about a specific identity or about a specific topic. Um, so these offices often do a lot of different things, but the main focus is to help students of color feel supported and feel valued at their campus communities. Um, if you are interested in any of what I've said, I encourage you to go to a university that you are interested in or the university that you're currently at and go on their website and find out what your respective multicultural office does. Uh, many of them should have some listings of the signature programs that they do uh, regularly for students. Um, and if I can share any quick thing about the work that I do or the work that I've personally experienced um, in this office and for myself as a student is many students um, including myself when I was in college, wish that they had found um, our office or found a space to explore their identity quicker. Um, many students really regret not being able to come in earlier or not having known about our office. Um, some express hesitations about, should I be, can I be here? And am I enough to be here? And like, yes, like, absolutely. 
um, our centers exist to support the students. So I always want to encourage that. And I always want to encourage students, even if you are not 100% sure if you want to be a part of an office like ours or know that you'll need the type of services that we offer, simply just come in and explore and talk to some of the staff. Um, even just to know what's there for you, because again, our offices exist for the students. So take advantage of that. Um, many of our offices are also just simply spaces for students to come in and hang out. Um, I have students who come into our office and they just sleep on the couch. Um, really, again, take advantage of the multicultural centers at your campus because they do exist for the students. Um, so yeah. The second resource I wanted to talk about is the undergraduate research office within your respective campus. If you're a student who's really interested in doing more research, whether it be in STEM, whether it be in humanities, whether it be in art, there's research opportunities everywhere. And a great way to get involved in that or get jumpstart on your research journey is via the undergraduate research office. They offer all sorts of different opportunities. So speaking with an advisor about maybe some faculty who have similar research topics that you're interested in or finding a research assistant position, um, oftentimes those are paid as well, being able to get engaged in your own personal research, getting support with filling out an IRB, which is what you need in order to be able to practice uh, research ethics and then being able to also get feedback, being able to present at conferences, at symposiums, whether it's hosted by your university or maybe a conference that the office may know more about. Um, whatever the case may be, I would highly, highly recommend just skedaddling on over to the research office on your respective campus. Um, so that way you can find out all the opportunities that they have, get support whenever you want to pursue some research on your own, and being able to familiarize yourself with this area um, that might help you professionally, that might help you personally, and really jumpstart um, a really, really, really cool activity within your college journey. Hey, what's going on, y'all? So what are career services? Uh, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about career services as a whole, but overall, career services offers career support to students and alum alumni across um, multiple disciplines and levels of study. So the dope thing about career services is it really meets students where they are. Um, a long time ago, it used to just, career services was only a standalone office where students would go to to receive support with a resume, with a cover letter, um, help with uh, working on an internship, thinking about post-graduation, um, and also thinking about professional or graduate school. But I think now, career service offices has expanded their reach across campus. Um, and again, one of the dope things about career services is it really meets students where they are. So this is a resource that is offered to all students. Um, students have paid for this in their tuition. Um, and it's really dope because like I said, it meets students where they are. So whether you um, had an internship and looking for a way to kind of revise your skills or um, you have you haven't had any work experience at all. I think coming into a career office is a you know one a, a safe place where you can meet with a career counselor or a career coach to 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 meet where you are and what you're looking for and to work on your goals. So whether that's to build strength, whether that's to polish your resume, whether that's looking for a job after graduation, I think your career services office is a great resource to utilize um, during your time in college, and it can happen at various points, right? You can go during your sophomore year where you're interested in looking for an internship and um, maybe engineering field. And by the time junior years come around, you, you change your major, right? And um, you're now thinking about education. So your career office, your career services office is a place on campus where you can pivot um, and go to, to brush up on skills. You can brush up on um, things that'll make you successful and to what you're looking for. Um, and another thing about the career re the career services center is they have a great relationship with uh, faculty, staff, employers. So it's just a great place to go to to receive advice um, that supports your career journey. 
If anybody has any questions about utilizing their career service centers on campus or just any questions about connecting at all, uh, don't hesitate to reach out and I'd be happy to help at any point.